Hello. With this specific video, I'm not just making a general video that I mean for everyone to watch. I am talking to you, directly to you, and only to you, and I want to tell you why you should read Cradle. Cradle was a book series that I didn't feel was as universally hyped as some of the biggest names in fantasy. But every time I posted a video talking about books in general or series in general, I always had people that would come into my comments and say, hey, what about Cradle? Or I would be watching booktube videos and I would see videos where people talked about Cradle here on the side. And those Cradle fans, they were just so, so passionate about the thing that they loved. I didn't understand it, but eventually I succumbed and I read the first book in Cradle, which uh, eventually evolved into me reading the entire series in a couple weeks. And it has become one of my favorite series in fantasy and I just want to share with you, yes you, why I love it so much and why I think it is so cool and unique in the fantasy genre. So Cradle is something that exists within a subgenre of fantasy called progression fantasy. And I guess the title is pretty self-evident. It's about getting stronger to progress to meet the goals that the series require. The title is very apt. But if you're like me, that sounds a little bit strange because in a lot of ways, that's what all fantasy is. And I can't say that much about progression fantasy in general, but what I can say is the reason that Cradle works so well as a progression fantasy is it's all about the carrot on the stick. It's all about escalation. It's all about foreshadowing. And it's all about the specifics of how you get there. You see the problem with a story being based on the fact that, oh, there is something greater that I need to become more powerful to overcome. It's really easy to simplify that into a formula that seems like it would get repetitive and boring. Like, oh, there's a new bad guy. I get stronger. I defeat the new bad guy. And then I win. And and then there's another new bad guy. But that is such a reductive way of analyzing pretty much any story that I think it's extremely disingenuous and honestly a little bit lazy to critique Cradle for being just that. Because Cradle explores the possibility space with so many different angles to approach this from. I've seen a lot of people read the first book of Cradle and say, well, it's just something formulaic that's going to become really repetitive because that is such a simple premise. Like I said, lots of stories are that simple premise. The Stormlight Archive is the character gets more powerful, he levels up something new and more powerful comes along. That's a lot of stories. But what Cradle does is it gamifies that and it puts it in the context of something with a scale unlike any fantasy series that I've ever read before. And while I do think that this series, which is currently 10 books, the 11th book is about to come out next month and I am beyond hype. And while I even think that this series takes a little bit to uh, get its best foot out there, that doesn't make any sense. While I think that this series doesn't immediately show the best parts about itself, in the early goings, there are some things that it gets right, which is the foreshadowing and the scale thing. In reality, the first book of Cradle starts very generically. It feels very familiar for a reason, but there is a thing that happens in the midpoint of that first book, if you've read it, you know what I mean, that sets up a Chekhov's gun style event that is, in, it's just mind blowing. Like when it happens in the first book, you're like, what on earth is happening? And over the course of that series, there's sort of two plots being developed. There's actually quite a few, but you don't always pick up on them. But it's really easy to follow the two main plots. There's this crazy, huge scale conflict, and then there is the story that's happening with the main protagonist that we're following. The huge top scale conflict that it shows the full epicness and breadth of this world is given with like little kernels throughout each book. Well, I think that the main story about the main character, Linden, starts off pretty slow and it eventually builds up to be pretty big. But the foreshadowing is laid. You know what sorts of things are possible in this world from the first book, even though you don't get to see as much of them as maybe you would like. And that's kind of how the series works. They show you something really, really cool, and then they sort of tease the path of how to get there. But as Will White's story unfolds along the page, it's very clear that he gets so much better at handling this carrot on a stick loop cycle. And there are hints of what's to come even in the first book. Like the book, essentially has levels of power one through eight, we'll say. And if the character starts at level zero, which he kind of does, you want to see him progress to level one, and then you naturally would think he'd progress to level two. But Will White is excellent at handling the two steps forward, one step back sort of situation, where instead of going just to level one from level zero, we see a roundabout path that the main character is able to take, which allows you to understand that there is a lot more nuance to the magic and progression in this world 
world than you may have initially thought. So instead of just leveling up through the levels at zero through eight, you find out that there's so much more that's possible within the possibility space of what's presented to you. This story exists somewhere between a hard and a soft magic system, but it's a lot harder than you might think with a story that goes as uh, buck wild as it does eventually. At the beginning of the series, so much is focused on the plot that you have a really hard time connecting to the characters, at least I did. So what White does throughout the series is while allowing you to also just spend more time with the characters so that you feel more connected to them and you get to understand their interpersonal relationships more, you also get the Stormlight Archive effect of having power elements tied to character development at different points of the story, which is always a really cool blending. And as the characters grow and become more fleshed out, it's not like it's just exposited to you and it's a surprise. When the characters begin having revelations about their own personal goals and self, they're things that you can see coming because he's actually secretly, while everything is exploding and kingdoms are at stake and politics are sort of happening, not this is a super political book, but like forces are moving and everything is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you actually find out that secretly you have been understanding the characters. They're not the deepest and most intricate characters, but they're bigger than you think. And there is this push and pull throughout the series where you have these two story arcs that I mentioned before, where one is huge and one is a lot smaller scale. And you start to wonder what is the importance of the smaller scale story when compared to the greater story, which then makes you start asking philosophical questions about life, which is, well, if the world and the global everything is going this direction, how much does the individual matter? And Cradle answers, it matters a lot because we don't exist apart from the universe that we live in and the decisions that we make on an individual level do matter. And as these things begin to play out on the epic stage of the world that is Cradle, you'll find that you become much more attached than you ever thought that you were. And it is a series that I've talked about being super popcorn or super candy because it's so sweet and you just want to keep taking. But then you realize that maybe there's a little bit of vitamins in that sugar. And maybe this starts as something that I was enjoying more as a side pastime and eventually became something where like the 10th book, I was in tears at multiple points. I was gut wrenched over multiple things that were happening. I was so nervous for things that had been teased and I was afraid of happening happening because everything about Cradle seems really, really popcorn, but there's actually a lot more substance to it than you realize when you're actively reading it. And then you step away from it and you're like, dang, that was really cool. This is manifested by the characters. This is manifested by the world. This is manifested by the magic system. And this is excellently managed by the way that characters progress throughout the series. As characters form relationships and undercover secrets that are hidden within the world, you find out that you actually become really attached to even power elements of the story. This is a really dumb comparison. But take, for example, if you've been watching my videos for some time and then all of a sudden something crazy happened, there was a disaster and I lost my hat. For some reason, even though it doesn't seem like there should be, there's an emotional weight attached to that thing that I've gotten that may or may not provide substantial value for whatever this channel is. What if due to the insane humidity in the Midwest right now, all of a sudden my glasses were fogging up every time I walked outside, so I had to take off my glasses and I could no longer use them. They were no longer of value to me. There's a big thing that comes with that. Sleep. No, when I'm super reliant on my glasses to read everything, being forced to live life without them changes everything in a way that you realize you are in way deeper than you possibly could have imagined because you can understand the implications when they're presented to you right away. And then as the story may continue to unfold and you realize it's actually more problematic than you even understood because those glasses were so important. What if while I was doing one of these videos, all of a sudden I found a pack of sour Skittles on my desk, which I just did. Sour Skittles seem super, super cool. But what if I realized when I ate those Sour Skittles, they allowed me to have some new ability or power that was unique to me that I may be able to use to my advantage when I'm making a booktube video, like it makes me funnier or whatever. But even those things I'm describing are random. What if they all fit within the world building and magic system that was already established before they show up so they don't just seem like MacGuffin items? That's pretty much everything in the series, plus 
there's the leveling up system, plus there's the multiple levels of storyline, plus there's lots of characters being developed, and then you start to have emotional connections to all of them, and there's a pretty big cast and cradle. As I've said, Will White is a king of foreshadowing. In lots of books, he will put in just a little tiny piece of something interesting, makes you go, I wonder what the heck that thing is about. And sometimes you get the payoff right away, and sometimes he just kind of teases you along, and then you realize later on, oh crap, it was building to something so much bigger than I even realized. Cradle is like the best version of a superhero TV show arc. I don't think any TV show has actually been able to nail it the way Cradle does though. Now, if you just pick up Unsold, the first book in Cradle, you may think that what I'm saying is kind of crazy because it does seem pretty cookie cutter, run of the mill style setup with the exception of that really cool kind of plot line I alluded to. Cradle's books are so digestible that you don't think about them being as deep as they are. And while I said it doesn't start the best way, it takes two or three books length of Cradle to equal the book length of another book. And I think it sort of makes sense to see those as a single uh, arc. Like I'm not the type of person that normally says, hey, if you pick something up and you didn't enjoy it, you have to read the second one before you can have a real judgment. Hey, if you don't like the first book, you don't like the first book. But the first book, like I said, doesn't show the best parts of itself right away. It's part of a bigger arc. So much so that the author is actually selling the first three books now as a single package that you can buy, which I think makes a lot more sense because you actually start to see a lot more of how good the foreshadowing is, how good the world building is, and how good everything starts to pay off. And there's so many freaking payoffs in the series. And it may sound like a lot. There's 10 books out for Cradle right now, but just think about it. All 10 books of Cradle are only equivalent to like the first two Stormlight Archive books or something, because they're shorter, which makes them more digestible, but way more bingeable. Because I'm kind of a latecomer, I'm not super familiar with this personally, but I've been told that Will White is actually really cool about wanting to onboard people onto this series. So usually when a new book in this series is released, he makes all of the other books really discounted and or free. Also worth mentioning, if you are a Kindle Unlimited subscriber, you can read all of these books for free. So if you're looking for something super fast paced and super amazing to read and you have Kindle Unlimited or you have some spare time or funds, there's really no reason to not to. All the things that I talked about before are sort of story framing devices, but I also have to mention that the combat in Cradle continually evolves to such a cool place. Like the, the battles are handled so cool in this story and they, they level up along with the characters and the abilities that they have because the battles that happen in Unsold are super, super basic because your character's level zero. But the battles that happen later on in the series when there's lots of different options, the battles Battles can take quite a long time, but they move super fast and they make sense. And you find yourself like completely swayed, like by a really close, like sports game where one person scores, then they tie it up and then somebody else scores. But it's way more interesting than sports games because it's freaking fantasy magic being thrown at each other. With all of the things that are teased and introduced, if you're a person that likes theorizing, like with the Cosmere, I don't know if you've ever heard about this, but the Cosmere has a lot of people that like to theorize about it and really analyze the those foreshadowing bits to see if they're gonna pan out. I'm just so freaking shocked that more people don't do this with Cradle. There is a community, I did find it. It does exist for Cradle, but way more people should be doing this because this is the type of thing that obviously a huge audience likes to do. You can totally do that with the Cradle series where there's so many pieces to unravel. All right, let's just get down to a reductive summarizing of what Cradle is. Cradle is a fantasy story that's reminiscent of Dragon Ball Z with the heart of Avatar, a scale that rivals Warhammer, an accessibility and onboarding ramp that's really, really easy to understand, similar to something like the Chronicles of Narnia or Aragon, battles that are fast paced but deep and unlike anything that I've read, and I've read a decent amount of fantasy over the last few years. You can follow it on the channel. And the tone of the series is one that never gets too dark and is easily accessible to people of all the ages. It's not a grim dark thing. It doesn't get very explicit ever. It's recommendable to like everyone. It's incredible, deep, and incredibly well realized while able to avoid a lot of controversial pitfalls. And it's something that people of all ages can really read and enjoy regardless of prior fantasy experience. But even as someone who reads a ton of epic fantasy, it super lands. Cradle 
is not a series that will work for every single person, but unlike some of my other favorite series like The Cosmere or The Dresden Files, I have a hard time thinking of people that will just outright hate this one. There may be some people where it doesn't land as hard as, as it does for me, but it's not long and overly drawn out, even though there's a lot of books in it. It doesn't have the weird awkwardness of something like King Killer or Dresden, where it just gets downright messed up. The tone is something lighthearted, like an Avatar The Last Airbender, but with more depth than I got out of the first season of that show. And yeah, I haven't watched the rest of that show yet. What I'm saying is you, you, thank you for watching. You should go read Cradle. Give it a shot. If you've already read Cradle, maybe you should send this video to one of your friends who has not. If you either object to something that I said in this video or you really agree with something I said in this video, let me know in the comments down below. If you liked it, smash the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos from me about Cradle, because I'm going to be reading that 11th book as soon as it drops, or any of the other epic fantasy slash science fiction that I tend to read, please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to see you again. For more discussions, there's a Discord link in the description down below, including channels for all of the cradle books thank you so much for watching no really stop thank you so much for watching i love you goodbye sleep no one ever get enough always looking out tired sleep no one ever get enough if i don't show up i might get fired sleep no one ever get enough always looking out tired sleep no one ever get enough if i don't show up i might get fired